Welcome to the Native Diamond Podcast. Oh, shit! What you waiting for? Please don't forget to like, like the, video, the video, hit subscribe, ring the bell. That way you're notified every time I drop a new episode of Native, Native Diamond, Diamond Podcast. Podcast. I have my friend Larry with me from Iron Sharpens Iron. Um, I'm going to let you talk about yourself a little bit, give yourself a little bio for everyone that's listening. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, well, my name is Larry. My name is Larry. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Sharpens Iron. Um, we are a straight edge black and hardcore band. Uh, draw a lot of influences from all, all extreme sorts of metal and hardcore um and we just put out an ep called the tragedy of mankind um and uh yeah i'm just a solo solo artist in a band i guess you could put it um i recorded all the instruments on the cd so um yeah so it, it's been a journey and it's been pretty cool reaching out to people and i'm glad that some people are digging the music i've been creating so it's been awesome yeah definitely for sure um so before we got into talking about the tragedy of mankind, I wanted to plug Prevention Lifeline. It's a 1-800-73-TALK. So you can call that number if you want to talk about anything. That's something that we are definitely behind, me and Larry. Um, you yourself, you are straight edge and you cover minor threats. So um, you want to talk about being straight edge? Uh, sure. Uh, I've been straight edge for about 18 years now. Um, it's been uh, something that I really, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's not been a struggle for me the, to make that life choice. Um, I had a heroin addict in my family. I had a uh, grandpa that, that was an extreme alcoholic for a lot of years. And um, I just never really found comfort in any of those things. I'd never liked not being in control of my body. Um I have epilepsy, so that's also another thing. Um, so, you know, after having seizures and stuff like that and not being in control of my body, uh, taking something voluntarily that would leave it to where I wouldn't have control of my body was just another reason for me to not want to have anything to do with it. And so once I joined, like, the punk hardcore scene when I was a teenager, uh, I was drawn to it immediately when people were like, oh, no, this is like a thing. This is what we do. We, we don't do any of this stuff. We just go to hardcore shows, have fun, and maybe drink Coke and eat pizza. And I'm like, I love pizza. So, <laughs> and hardcore. So it was perfect for me. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's definitely something I've been a part of. I like to try to talk about it to people that don't understand it. Um, and I like to make people just aware that they don't have to do all this stuff to, to keep up. I mean, not now weed is legal pretty much everywhere. Um, you know, I got, I know people that are, you know, 13, 14 that are doing it all the time and already getting the harder drugs mm -hmm. by the time, you know, they're old enough to drive. Um, so, I mean, I want people to know that they don't have to do that stuff. If they don't want to, and they shouldn't feel pressured to do so. So. Yeah, definitely. That's a very good point there. Um, so, you know, in your song, Among Shadows, in your video, you know, we noticed X's on your hands. So that was kind of the dead giveaway for me. And then the Straight Edge by Minor Threat, which is a classic. Um, so are you guys huge proponents of the PMA lifestyle or philosophy, rather? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, I first heard about it from Toby Morse from H2O. Um, I saw one of his... Um, uh, him just talking about it and uh, and then just their lyrics in general i mean one life one chance uh different stuff like that so it was cool just seeing positivity um i had never seen that side of hardcore when i was younger so i thought that was really really cool um and so yeah that really drew me in i'm just like yeah forward thinking uh and then looking forward was another band that was super positive i got to play a lot of shows with when i was younger um they were actually like a christian straight edge hardcore band um something you barely ever hear about now so um mm -hmm. yeah definitely uh um the pma is definitely something i try to push forward for um i try not to be super negative all the time i uh, which it, it the world can make it very hard to be but yeah no the positive mental attitude is definitely something that's really cool and uh something i take personally and try to stick to so right uh did you know that toby morris has a podcast one life one chance I, I do, and um, I do, I'm not caught up on it. I need to go check out some more stuff. The dude is 
a beast. He's done so much stuff. It's ridiculous. I know he was doing a lot of tours for schools and stuff like that and giving um, speeches on straight edge and PMA and stuff, but I haven't kept up on his podcast. So I need <laughs> <to> on that. <laughs> Honestly, me either, but I did check out the HR episode where he, you know, he interviewed HR from bad brains. I thought that was a really cool. That's awesome. That listening because so. If anyone's interested, go check out One Life, One Chance, Toby Morris. Um, anyway, so yeah, suicide is huge in the United States, especially right now with coronavirus going on. Um, I looked up some statistics earlier. One one person is taking their life every 20 seconds, and it's been a 20-second increase from last year. Last year, it was one every 40 seconds. Um I'm sure there's a direct, you know, correlation between this and the coronavirus epidemic. Um, how heavy is this hitting you personally? Um, personally, um, I can't say that the coronavirus has affected us as much as some people as far as like, you know, being with the cabin fever and being stuck at home. My wife and I are both still working full time. Um, she's working full time. She gets people, to, you know, she helps people get jobs for a living pretty much. Um, um, she helps talk to the companies and then, you know, works with the other people that try to be like the medium person, the, the do all that relationship between business and help those people get jobs that are struggling. So, you know, she's really essential. I'm a maintenance worker, so I fix stuff all day long and I work at an apartment complex. So more people are at home right now than what there usually is. So my work is almost doubled. So other than workloads increasing and then us being both around and possibly exposed to the virus um, increase, it has, that's been stressful. Um, just, you know, just constantly washing your hands and being, you know, aware of that and then not touching your face and stuff. But mm -hmm. other than that, that's, we haven't been like stuck at home. So, you know, we haven't had a bunch of anxiety just stuck around the house, not being able to get out and about, mm -hmm. but that's how it's affecting us the most. Um, but uh, other than that, uh, not not too bad because of that. We're still out and about in the thick of it. So, uh, Did you have any like shows planned? Like you were going to go to yourself personally and you had to like bail on it? Yeah, I actually was going to go to, there was a show at Mulligan's Pub in Grand Rapids. And uh, I already had a bunch of our CDs for um, an EPs just, printed just burned copies and then um just clear cases and i was going to go hand them out um, my buddy ian and his band disappear was going to be playing at mulligan's pub in grand rapids with uh another friend of mine joel odie uh and his band we're self we're both going to be playing there and i was just going to hand them out for free to all the people that were there um and i was pretty stoked to go to that and because uh, i haven't seen any of them live yet um joel was in another band called brothers that was a really big inspiration and they're actually pretty positive with most of their lyrics and vocals too. So, um, yeah, they're definitely, uh, definitely was a show I really wanted to go to, but right. de definitely can't go to it anymore. But I get it, you know, stay I, home. I, I missed the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I missed the, the Die Art is Murder uh, headline with Fit for an Autopsy. I was pretty bummed about it. I've been trying to check them out for five years now. <laughs> Yeah, for, yeah. for an autopsy, I, I really got into them when uh, Nate Johnson was singing for him, so I definitely would have liked to have seen them, too. Oh, yeah, man. I've seen them a couple times, and, dude, they shred, and, like, their new stuff is, like, way more progressive. It's yeah. I love it. Like, it just, they just get better and better to me. Um, yeah, so, you know, metal and hardcore is, you know, an outlet for a lot of people and, you know, say people's like, you know, suicidal thoughts and stuff like that. Um, you know, it kind of gets a bad rep though for mental illnesses as far as people think that it doesn't really help mental illnesses. It kind of just, you know, it kind of expedites everything. So it helps you. Like, do you think, um, you know, do you think that metal and hardcore helps with mental illness or do you think it actually, you know, doesn't? <laughs> um, you know, now I, th I, th now I think if I think about it, it's really, it's no different than any kind of music. I think it all has to do with the lyrics. Um, you know, somebody could listen to a Johnny Cash song and be super depressed because his lyrics are super depressed or Hank Williams, um, any stuff like that. I mean, 
you know, metal is just as aggressive as far as the music and, and musicality goes. But uh, I think it all just depends on the lyrics and how people take them and what they're looking for. I mean, if you're looking to find something negative, you will find something negative. I mean, and that's that's the thing why mental health can be so scary, because if you're not well mentally, you can take something that is one way and perceive it in a different way just because that's what you're looking for at the time. So, you know, if I'm depressed and looking for something negative, I could find something negative in a hate breed song, even though almost every single one of their lyrics is all about positive forward thinking. So mm-hmm. I don't think that, that metal and hardcore necessarily uh, makes it harder. If anything, I think it's an outlet to get your aggression and everything out. But if you're looking for negativity, you'll find it no matter what you're listening to. So yeah. Um, that that question kind of came to me from I don't I don't know how familiar you are with like Amir, but um they had just put out Gypsy Disco and that was basically a suicide prevention awareness type song, and um you know Frankie basically said like he basically was like you know I'm taking away all the lyrics that I said before that was not who I am now and you know he was like you know singing about my depression and stuff every day it didn't help me at all. You know, he kind of like was basically saying that he don't he didn't think that this type of music actually helped. So that was kind of the you know inspiration for that question. And um, you know, it's interesting to hear his point of view on this. So I just wanted your take on it. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah, I I think that it's different. I mean I mean and I play in multiple bands. I play in a blues band, play drums for that too. Um and, and I get different feelings from different bands, but as far as the, I, I feel like emotionally it all comes from the lyrics. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I definitely wouldn't, I, I wouldn't think that it would cause me to think negative thoughts unless I was already in that place. Mm-hmm. So the song Among Shadows, that's the suicide prevention awareness song off the EP what are some other reoccurring topics that you speak about on other songs on your EP? Okay. Um, we do that on, for the Among Shadows. Um, Straight Edge, we do just a minor threat cover. And then um, Oath and Atom Bomb kind of flood together. And both of them are, are about like uh, heroin abuse, which has become an epidemic in Muskegon. Um, you know, I know more people addicted to heroin now than I ever have in my entire life. Um, I don't know if it's because it's so easy to get to or just because it's so addictive, but I mean, there's people and they need help. I mean, there's people dying all the time. They don't have the resources to go get help. And when they do try to get help, they have drug dealers knocking on their door and their family's doors, not letting them get help, you know, threatening them. So it's like, it's all about that. It's just that vicious cycle of heroin. And that's what that song is about. Um, And it's just, you know, pushing for more towards the straight edge culture too, just that it's okay not to do any of those things. Um, don't let yourself fall towards, you know, even getting close to that, you know, um, or, or getting roped into doing that or feeling pressured and having to try that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, the other song, Dehumanized, is all about our political system and how just terrible it is. I mean, just nobody tries to better anything through politics anymore. All it is is just, you know, in my opinion, you know, your votes don't count the way that they should. Um, you know, if that was the case, in my opinion, it should be Bernie Sanders versus Trump 2020. It shouldn't be, you know, any, anything to deal with what's going on right now. I mean, it, it should be those two fighting with each other right now. But, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me that corporations and money is what buys, you know, the candidate rather than the voters of America. And that's the way I view that. So it's, it's all about how corporate greed and money is what funds politics rather than the people and, you know, our voices that should matter. So that's what that song's about. And that, those are the topics that pretty much cover the whole EP. Okay. Yeah. That's something that, you know, a lot of people come to. So, you know, I just wanted to plug that cause you know, learn about you and learn about what you are writing about so that, you know, they can relate to your topics. What are, oh, what are some of your influences and like, what do you think your band or you yourself, what do you think you sound like to other people? Um, I've had a few people, uh, our label owner actually said the other day, he thought we sounded like uh, Converge meets Belphegor. <laughs> so I'm like, 
that's cool. That was a cool compliment. Um, uh, a few he had a few people say um, pig destroyer in some spots. Um, uh, and just uh, most of them just say gritty hardcore with like some black metal influence kind of stuff, which is pretty much all we are. I mean, before I started writing, I was listening to a little bit of everything. I was really jamming on a lot of Shy Halud, um, a lot of uh, my buddy's band, um, Sunlight's Bane, uh, before they broke up. And then he's in a new band called Wounded Touch, which I get got a lot into, too, as well. Um, a lot a lot of different stuff really inspired me to write these songs. And then I, I actually wrote a lot of the music with my buddy Adam Eklund in a band we were jamming in before this. Um, and he pl still plays drums in Infinite Design. So that's what fueled a lot of this was just different stages some of these songs have been riffs for a year or so and then some of them i just wrote like a month ago so it <laughs> kind of so but yeah it all just kind of came together from listening to a lot of different stuff and jamming with a lot of different artists so cool um you know a lot of people ask this question so i'm gonna ask you so like how long did it take you to find your scream you know like a lot of people are learning how to scream and i think that's a question that a lot of people want to ask so how long did it take you um it i would say it probably took me maybe like a year or so i mean like when i first started out i just did like mids um when i was growing up it was all about like the uh, christian hardcore scene it was like when solid state was getting really popular um and then when ferret record so i mean one of my favorite bands that i, I modeled a lot of emotion around was beloved growing up i their their failure on ep is or a cd is one of my favorites um i screamed along to that in my car every chance i could get um the same thing with some old remembering never i loved those guys uh, shy halud um so listening to a lot of them um that's where i kind of found my scream was just doing it and then after i watched some of the zen of screaming uh and learning how to actually sing and scream from your di diaphragm rather than your throat Mm -hmm. that helped a lot so um the dude from every time i die uh you know he he watched the same thing there's a lot of different artists and stuff that actually watched that video that helped you realize where you're supposed to be breathing from and pushing from so you don't hurt yourself and mm -hmm. so you can get you know whatever tones you're trying to find but after that it was just from being in bands consistently i mean i was in a band called time of plague after that uh we were a band for quite a while uh beyond hatred Canon X Ball, and then I was in a band called Infinite Design for over a decade. We played tons of shows, and that's like technical death metal. So there's tons of room for learning different vocals there. So, um, what kind of made you go your own, you know, way as far as like a solo musician? Um, I would say I was already jamming in a few different bands. Um, I parted ways with Infinite Design a while ago so I could focus on uh, my health and. Um, yeah, I just was jamming in another band. I played drums for a blues kind of style band. He calls it gothic blues, um, called a uh, Colt snuffer and the dead horseman. And, uh, I was having a lot of fun doing that. And I just started jamming more on guitar. And as I'd become more frustrated with, uh, the world around me with all the different issues that are going on, whether it be politics or, you know, losing friends to heroin or whatever, um, I started picking up guitars and writing some riffs and, uh, started coming together and I ended up re recording one song and I put it out and my buddy Taylor Pats from um, Under City Records said he'd put it out and uh, people seemed to dig it. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to do a full EP and, and ha he was willing to put it out and I was like, you know, why not, you know, get to have some creativity, especially during a time where a lot of stuff is really negative right now, um, maybe get some points and even if I reach one person that's struggling with depression, you know, I, I met I met what it is that I set out to do. So um, yeah. that's kind of what pushed me to want to record it and put it out there. So Yeah, I love that. Honestly, that that's kind of what attracted me to do this interview, um, just how you're involved in all the suicide awareness. Uh, that really just tells me that you're a genuine person. You actually care about other people and you're not selfish. So that, that was what kind of drew me into you. That's awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so describe to me your creative process as far as like writing this EP. Um, did you have to write when you were inspired or did you push yourself to write? How, how did you do that? Um, I'd say probably a little bit of both. I mean, there's definitely some times I had some writer block, um, mm -hmm. but uh, I would listen to stuff that would maybe inspire me. Um, I listened to a lot of uh, just 
everything really. I mean, I really wrote some of the stuff listening to some really different kinds of hardcore, like black and hardcore. Or, um, there's a band called Like Rats and Nails, and I really like all those bands. Uh, they influenced me for some of the writing. All Pigs Must Die, I really got into. I was jamming on a lot of that kind of stuff and uh, found some inspiration in that. Um, I listened to a lot of uh, my buddy Nick Holland was in a couple different bands uh, with Nate Barnes. And uh, now he's in Throne and the other one's in Wounded Touch, but they were in a band called Traitor. And that band was just pure aggression before it turned into Sunlight Bane and it was more black metal. But a lot of our stuff, I'd listen to them and bands that sound like them Enemy of Creation, Millions of Dead Angels. Uh, and it really got me the hardcore tone that I wanted with the black metal influence. And so that would inspire me to write riffs. Um, and then I just added some, you know, straight up metal riffs from when I was in Infinite Design. That was just my own kind of sounds, my own kind of vocals, phrasing and stuff like that. Just stuff that came naturally um, from playing over the years. So I definitely get inspired by people, but I definitely have to force some stuff out. I mean, I rewrote a lot of different riffs. I would write it and then I'd come back to the next day. I'm like, nope. <laughs> so... <laughs> I play with some stuff. I was like, eh, that ain't going to be on the EP. So, I mean, I think I rewrote stuff all the way up until we actually recorded the EP. I think I rewrote, I rewrote the ending to the dehumanized actually. That was going to be more of like, a, um, straight up like sl sludgy doom riff. And I was like, no, nah, I want it to be like just a straight up black metal breakdown kind of sound and riff. So I ended up going for that instead. So definitely had some, some, you know, edits and stuff along the way that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> is there a certain point where you have to just say i gotta let this just go like as far like you know i gotta stop messing with the song you know just let it go let it breathe yeah definitely i mean there's definitely some times where it's like you can be your you, your own worst enemy writing songs because you always want to make things better or you know so the thing i try to focus on most other than riffs is if I find a riff and I really like it, and then I, I, I find two, say I like, um, I'll try to transition them and see how they transition together. And if they, if I can't find transitions between riffs, one of those riffs ain't working. So most of the time when I write a song, I usually write one riff, and then I base most of the other riffs from the song around that riff in one way, shape, or form. Whether it's one chord, um, a pattern, or whatever, that's usually how I kind of find my way around that. Um, so that's usually how that kind of process goes but i there's definitely been times i'm like i'm just gonna leave that and then come back to it and then usually i end up will be like no nah, i still don't like it or yeah it was actually pretty sweet i was being too hard on myself or whatever so yeah definitely <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i can see that a lot you know because like people i look up to they say it all the time like you can be your own worst enemy so i just want to know your thoughts and you know if you've had to just be like you know what screw it i'm gonna let the song go you know who cares <laughs> no there's definitely been time i mean like when i was an in infinite for for uh you know you know as an example uh those dudes uh are some of the m most talented musicians i've ever met um so originally i just sang for those dudes then we lost some guitar players so i ended up joining as a rhythm guitar player i that's where i, I owe most of my technicality on guitar too is from jamming with those guys you when you jam with other people that are great musicians you start to learn, you know, different things you would have never thought you would have done. I never learned how the tweet pick or any of that kind of crazy stuff. But, um, yeah, the, the dude that recorded our stuff, Jason Ingersoll, uh, he's their, their lead guitar player and he's one of the most talented guitar players I've ever met. And so he pushed me to be a better musician. So that's one of the reasons why I can do what I do is just from playing with other talented people. And then you learn from it. So how did, how did you find yourself getting into getting into heavy music or whatever? Do you think like it's an acquired taste or do you think like you just naturally are attracted to it? Um, I don't know. It's, uh, I definitely listened to like a lot of punk rock growing up. I think that some of it, when you're a musician, it has to do with you just wanting to be better and better at your craft. So when you start playing stuff that's more technical to play, um, you know, that's something that pushes you into heavier music. Um, I think the lyrics have a lot to do with it. Um, when I was younger, you know, I was super into like pop punk and everything else. So, I mean, I super got into like Dookie from Green Day and, uh, and so, um, I got into all that kind of stuff. Um, Rancid, I really got into. I got into more like 
gutter punk before I got into like hardcore and stuff. So I was super in the Operation IV. Um, I really like No Effects, MXPX, all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I got into a lot of that stuff. And then once I started transitioning into some of the hardcore bands and stuff, um, I started just progressively getting more and more metal influence into my punk rock. And so eventually it all just kind of fused together. So I think that's kind of how I ended up finding my way there. It was just getting the inspiration, the vocals, everything would draw me in one way, shape or form into a different kind of genre or territory. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I kind of had to graduate to it as well. You know, I got into punk first, so I think I think that's kind of where everyone starts. They kind of start with punk, and then they graduate up, and you know, it just depends on how much screaming you can handle, I guess. <laughs> but um, <laughs> if you could have it your way, and you could tour with any band, um, who would you see yourself opening up for? Uh, I definitely hate breed. Uh... Hey Breeds, to me, the ultimate, uh, one of the ultimate hardcore bands. I mean, Satisfaction of the Death of Desire is the, the main influence for me as, a, as somebody that loves hardcore music. That album is just solid gold. Um, a, cl a close second would be Terror. Um, I, I love Scott. Anything Scott Vogel has been a part of, uh, the dude lives and breathes hardcore. I like how much his passion is in his lyrics. Uh, the music is amazing. I mean... All those bands, I would say, would definitely be bands I would I would love to play a show with, just because they're so passionate about what they do, and they're they're non exclusive. They want everybody to be a part of the music that they share and the scene that they're a part of. So, definitely, I would say those two. Or Earth Crisis, because Earth oh, Crisis right. is. So. <laughs> I can see. You, I can see that. <laughs> I could totally see you with Earth Crisis. You you got that vibe for sure. Um. So yeah. A lot of people probably don't know, but you're a solo like band. You're like a one man band, basically. Um, what are your plans for performances in the future? Um, I thought about maybe uh, you know if if COVID isn't you know the end of the world, um, maybe uh, asking some, some buddies if they'd want to just set in and uh, if they'd want to either be a part of it. Um, writing, you know, I definitely am not opposed to somebody joining and actually wanting to write with me, and. Uh, yeah, I, that would be awesome. Otherwise, if somebody would just want to jam and like play three, four shows a year just so we could get out and then have a CD release show or something, that would be killer. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've definitely thought about it. Maybe asking some of my buddies and other bands that just want to learn the song so we could go play some live shows. Uh, that way they didn't have to be committed if they're already in other full-time bands. Because that's one of the struggles, too, is that so many people are in bands in my area already. They don't have the time to be able to, you know, go jam with somebody else. They're already in something else full time. Mm -hmm. And even me personally, I don't have a whole bunch of time because I'm already jamming in other projects. So mm -hmm. I don't have tons of time to be able to play live shows either. So it was still an awesome way to be able to get live, get the music out there for other people to listen to, um, mm -hmm. but not necessarily be, you know, obligations of touring or playing a bunch of shows. But uh, if if the opportunity knocks, you know, I, I don't know if I'd be able to say no, that's for sure. So I definitely am thinking about wanting to do a couple live shows a year if possible. But if not, then I'll just keep on doing EPs and putting music out there and hoping people dig it. All right. So if you're listening, I mean, go send your audition tape right now to Iron <laughs> Sharpens Iron and uh, let them know what you think about it. Uh, so um, the current state of hardcore and metal, do you feel like you know, is it on the decline for you? Uh, you? You know, personally, do you think that it's on the decline? Do you think that more people are not listening to heavier music? Uh, what are your thoughts on the current state of hardcore metal? I think like hardcore and, and metal, like it's always on the up and up. Uh, you just have to be looking for it. Um, if anything, I feel like it's actually getting more and more popular more and more people are listening to bands with screaming in it than I ever remember when I was younger. I mean, bands like Beartooth that are on like the radio to where, you know, they got tons of people that are listening to it and they don't necessarily like that. I mean, uh, I mean, even Slipknot, I mean, they're on the radio now. Like this, like that's radio rock. That's not like screaming or anything like that. Most people were like, Oh yeah, Slipknot. I like them in kill switch engage. My uncle loves kill switch engage. I'm like, you know, there's tons <laughs> of getting into metal at all ages. And so, I mean, I definitely think it's on the up and up as far as, like, 
extreme metals, you know, that's more and more popular. You got kids nowadays that are sweet picking by the time they're 15 doing blast beat parents' basement. So, and they can all record on their phone and I was recording to a tape. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> show how old I am, but like, yeah, no, it's, it's awesome, man. Like, uh, I think that if you want to listen to heavy music, it's there. And the passion is always there. There's always somebody there that wants to be, in that scene, in that community with other people. So I definitely think that it's on the up and up. I don't think you'll ever see it go away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, speaking about the scene, um, I want to ask if you could change anything about, you know, the metal community. Um, I would say any, any kind of a band or not even a band, like people that come to the shows and think that there's a sense of elitism, um, People thinking that, you know, people aren't welcome to that show. Um, those people need to not be a part of the scene. Like the whole point of the hardcore community and metal community is you go there because that's where you can be yourself. That's where you can share that experience of emotion and that outlet with other people. Um, my buddy, Jaron, uh, he played in a band called, well, he played in a million bands. Uh, one of his bands was All These Years and Nothing. And uh, that band had a lot of positive lyrics about that. Um, you know, striving through the years, never giving up. You're always going to be in that community with other people that care about you. So don't ever push other people away. Um, mm. That's what I feel like needs to change in some scenes is there's not enough people that want to include everybody. You know, they only want to include their existing friends. They don't want to meet anybody new. Uh, that's not how yeah. a scene progresses. You know, that, that's how a scene dies out. You know, those people aren't going to be at a hardcore show swimming in fists when they're 90. So what's going to happen to all these other people that are younger, you know, how are you going to draw more people into the scene to keep that, that energy going? So I think that's one of the only things I would change personally. And lastly, I want to ask, you know, what do you think the future is for, you know, hardcore and metal? Is it going to be a lot more solo artists getting into it? Or do you think that it's going to be a lot more fusion? Uh, what is your take on that? Um, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say because there is a lot of bands that record everything themselves or even bands that are have all members but then one guitar player shreds so he records all the guitar on cd just because they know that it's easier for that person to do all of it when i was in infinite design uh jay played all the guitar on most of the cds because we just knew that he'd be able to knock it out like that you know i mean rather than me try to take 15 takes on something because i wasn't a guitar player at the time i was a singer so i mean i think there's a lot of bands that might be in that same boat to where it's easier for one person to delegate certain things but then you know you got a lot of bands where everybody in the band is extremely talented and you know all of them do their own stuff and bring their own flavor to the record so you know i i feel like it's going to be you know different for a lot of different bands because so many people use so many different processes of recording and writing music there's so many people i mean look at the cattle decapitation they just did a music video from their houses i mean i think that's awesome i mean they didn't even have a drum set i mean that's just killer mm -hmm. so i mean you know stuff like that i mean i definitely think is uh is on the up and up as far as music goes there's not really any kind of limitations anymore for how you write for who's in your bands you know stuff like that i mean you can be countries apart and still be in a band with somebody nowadays with the technology so yeah that was basically that was basically it um i kind of goofed up on the first one I, <laughs> I thought i was recording and i wasn't so i really appreciate your time i know it was kind of a pain in the ass but you know you killed all the questions and you know i enjoyed having you on the podcast you know maybe i'll have you again in the future but um sure. Before we leave, I just want to plug, again, the 1-800 number, 1-800-273-TALK, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. I'm going to be donating this episode towards, you know, the hotline so they can, you know, use those funds accordingly. Um, if that's something you're interested in, I'll plug a link. And I think the minimum donation for Facebook is like five bucks. So, I mean, if you can afford five bucks right now, um, that would be great. You know, one person's dying every 20 seconds. So I just want to leave people with that. Um, any final thoughts you want to leave, um, you know, just for the public? <laughs> um, just uh, check out our EP. Uh, it's the tragedy of mankind. You can check us out on Bandcamp. Uh, it's X Iron Sharpens Iron X uh, dot Bandcamp dot com. Everything will be live streaming um, on Spotify, iTunes, everything else. Uh, that that's when the whole CD comes out. 
through Under City Records um, on May 1st. And um, other than that, check us out on Facebook, um, Instagram. It's Iron Sharpens Iron MI. And other than that, just if you're struggling, don't be afraid to ask other people. You know, everybody struggles with something, whether it be depression, anxiety, alcoholism, whatever it is. You know, you're never alone and somebody wants to talk to you and help you through your issues. So don't ever feel like you're alone and don't ever feel too, too, uh, you know, ashamed to call that number. They're used to talking to people and helping you get through struggles. So call them if you're having issues. Don't ever be afraid. You know, your life matters. You're not ever alone. You're not, you know, you, you have no low self-worth. You matter. So don't ever think you don't. Well, Larry, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for giving me a second chance with that goof up. And, you know, I appreciate everything that you're doing. Uh, everyone go check out Iron Shipe Runs Iron, uh, their new album, The Tragedy of Mankind. It's it's a good one. It's really raw. I think everyone's going to enjoy it. If you're into black metal, if you're into hardcore, um, I think you guys will really enjoy it. It's something special. It's not something, you know, that I just skip over. It, it immediately caught my attention. So I just want to share that with everyone. Uh, thanks again for being on the show. Hopefully we'll see you again on the show. We'll, we'll, we don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Sounds great, man. Thanks a lot for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that pretty much does it for today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. That way you don't miss a new episode of Native Diamond Podcast. Big shout out to Iron Sharpens Iron. Go check out the new album, The Tragedy of Mankind. I'm dropping all his links below. That way you can check it out today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until I see you guys on a future episode, shine on. Shine on.